السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد في سبيل الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه الصالحين الغر الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا بكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا ثم أما بعد Brothers and sisters Today's khutbah will be a continuation of what I spoke about last week Many of you were not there and so it may seem a little disconnected but if you go back and listen to the recording from last week's khutbah, then it will insha'Allah ta'ala be come all together. Last week, brothers and sisters, I started out by sharing a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he said, أَحِبُّ اللَّهَ لِمَا يَغْذُوكُمْ مِنْ نِعَمِهِ وَأَحِبُّونِي لِحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَأَحِبُّ أَهْلَ بَيْتِي لِحُبِّي which means he's commanding us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and saying have hub for Allah, love Allah, have love for Allah 
because of what he gives to you from his favors. And then he said, وَأَحِبُّونِ لِحُبِّ اللَّهِ And have love for me, have hub for me, out of your hub for Allah, due to your love for Allah. Or it could also mean, have hub for me, out of the fact that Allah has hub for me. أَحِبُّونِ لِحُبِّ اللَّهِ And then he said, وَأَحِبُّ أَهْلَ بَيْتِي لِحُبِّي And have hub, have love for the people of my household, the members of my household, out of your love for me. And we talked about last week how it is part of our deen to have love for the Ahl al-Bayt, to have love for the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And it is out of that love that every time we send salah upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, we also send salah and salam upon his family members. In every prayer, we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. And so it is part of our faith to love the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I talked about how the household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam includes the mothers of the believers by the testimony of the Qur'an. And it also includes... It also includes the daughter of Rasulullah, Sayyida Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, and her husband, Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and their two sons, Al-Hasan wal Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, as is evident from the famous Hadith al-Kisa, the Hadith that is mentioned in our Sunni traditions, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gathered these four members of his household along with himself and covered them with a cloak and made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, Allahumma ha'ulai ahlu bayti fa'adhib anhum al-rijsa wa tahirhum tatahira. He said, Ya Allah, these are ahlu bayti. These are the members of my household. So we have to and we must as Muslims love Sayyida Fatima and Sayyidina Ali and Sayyidina Al-Hasan wal Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhum jami'an. And last week I spoke to you about the tremendous virtues of Sayyida Fatima and the tremendous virtues of Sayyidina Ali and the tremendous virtues of the two grandsons of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but we could not continue. And so today I want to talk to you about the grandsons of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Al-Hasan wa al-Husayn radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. It is narrated in sound ahadith of the Sunni tradition that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one time looked at Al-Hasan and Al-Husayn as they were these young boys in his presence. And he said, Allahumma inni uhibbuhuma fa'ahibbahuma. That, Ya Allah, indeed I have hub for these two. I have love for these two. So please have hub for these two. About Al-Hasan in particular, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma inni uhibbuhu fa'ahibbahu. وَأَحِبَّ مَنْ يُحِبُّهُ He said, Ya Allah, indeed I have hub for him. So please, Ya Allah, you also have hub for him. And have hub for whoever has hub for him. Have love for whoever has love for him. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, and again, all of these ahadith are from our tradition, from Sunni, from the tradition of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. He also used to say about the two grandsons, مَنْ أَحَبَّهُمَا فَقَدْ أَحَبَّنِي وَمَنْ أَبْغَضَهُمَا فَقَدْ أَبْغَضَنِي That whoever has hub for these two, then that person has hub for me. And whoever has hatred for these two, has hatred for me. He also said, 
about Al Hassan wal Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, that they were Sayyida Shababi Ahli al Jannah. That they are indeed the masters, the leaders, the princes of the youth of the people of paradise. One time, Sayyiduna Hassan, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and this is later after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was a, a grown young man he was having a conversation with his brother Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an. and so Al-Hassan said to Al-Hussein وَدِدْتُ لَوْ أَنْلِي بَعْضَ شِدَّةِ قَلْبِكَ he said to him to Hussein, to his younger brother Hussein he said I wish that I had some of the strength of your heart. Some of the strength of your heart. Because Sayyiduna Hussein was a strong man. So Sayyiduna Hussein radiallahu ta'ala who replied to him and he said, وَأَنَا وَدِدْتُ أَنَّ لِي بَعْضَ مَا بُسِطَ مِنْ لِسَانِكَ He said to him, and I wish, my brother, I wish that I had some of the gentleness of your tongue. Because Sayyiduna Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anh, was a man of forbearance, a man of gentleness, and a man of eloquence. Radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Once after the killing of Sayyiduna Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, after he was killed by the blow of the sword by that infamous man in history after he passed away radiallahu ta'ala anhu people gave bay'ah pledge of allegiance to Sayyiduna Hassan the son of Sayyiduna Ali and Sayyiduna Hassan was the Khalifa of the Muslims the rightful legitimate Khalifa of the Muslims for six or seven months. And he had people with him ready to fight anyone who revolts. And yet, even though he was the rightful Khalifa, even though he had the power to stand up against and defeat any rebellion, he voluntarily stepped down from that position, stepped down from that position and gave it to Sayyiduna Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anna. Not because he was afraid of anything, not because he was a coward, not because he was incapable, not because he believed that he didn't have the right of that position, but simply because he wanted to bring peace to the Muslim community. For the greater good of the Muslim community, he gave up his own personal right to Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And on that day, he stood in front of people and he told them what he was doing and why he was doing it. And then he looked at Sayyidina Muawiyah and he said, Inna Allah qad wallaka ya Muawiyah ta hadha al-hadith. لِخَيْرٍ يَعْلَمُهُ عِنْدَكْ أَوْ لِشَرٍ يَعْلَمُهُ فِيك وَإِنْ أَدْرِي لَعَلَّهُ فِتْنَةٌ لَكُمْ وَمَتَاعٌ إِلَى حِينٍ He said to him, Indeed, Allah has put you in this position, O Muawiyah, because of some good that is in you that he knows, or because of some evil that is in you that he knows. And who knows, maybe it is a fitna, maybe it is a trial for you and an enjoyment for an appointed period of time, quoting the ayah of the Qur'an. The people who were supporting Sayyiduna Hassan, who wanted him to remain the Khalifa, were upset with him because he stepped down. So much so that some of them had the audacity and it shows you what kind of people they were. 
the audacity to call him Ya Mudhil al Mu'mineen instead of Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. Ya Mudhil al Mu'mineen. O oh, you who have brought humility, humiliation to the believers. And when he would hear that from them, he would say to them, La Wallah, La Wallah, Karihtu an aqtulakum min ajlil mulk. He would say, no, by Allah, I did not intend to bring humiliation to the believers. Rather, I simply disliked that I would be the cause of your death simply because of rule and authority. This is the character of the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. This is the forbearing character of Sayyiduna Hassan radiallahu ta'ala an. And yet, at the end of it all, he was poisoned. He was poisoned. And while he was on his deathbed, Sayyiduna Hussein, his brother, younger brother, came to him to visit. And he said to him, my brother, tell me who did this to you? And so Sayyidina Hassan replied to him and he said, I have been poisoned many times before. This is not the first time, but this would be the last time. And so Sayyiduna Hussein insisted and he said, why, please tell me who did this to you? So Sayyiduna Hassan said to him, why do you want to know? So that you kill him? And so Sayyiduna Hussein said, yes. And so Sayyiduna Hassan said, no, I will not tell you. Because if, I, if it is who I think it is, then Allah is stronger in punishment. But if it is not who I think it is, then I don't want an innocent person to die because of me. And then he gave his final wasiyah, radiallahu ta'ala an. He gave his final parting advice to his brother, al Hussein, and he said, Please bury me next to my grandfather, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because I have already sought permission from Aisha and she has given me permission but after I die please go back to her and ask her again and if she accepts again then please do that but he said if they don't allow you if the people don't allow you to do that and they are ready to spill blood because of this then please do not do that. Take me and bury me with the believers. And so, that is exactly what happened. After he died, Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu went to Sayyida Aisha and asked her, and she said, Na'am wa karama. Yes, it would be my honor to have the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be buried in my home, because it's her home. That's where the Prophet ﷺ is buried. But the people did not want that. And Hussein wanted to fight. But the Sahaba reminded him of the wasiyah of his brother. And so he ultimately complied. And he buried his brother Sayyidina Hassan in al baqir next to his mother Sayyida Atima. Radiallahu ta'ala anha wa anhum ajma'een. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد once رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said according to a hadith related by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad and Imam Al-Tirmidhi in Al-Jami and Imam Al-Hakim in his Mustadr and he said, هذا حديث صحيح, that this is a sound hadith. وواثقه الذهبي, and Zahabi agreed with him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, 
احب الله من احب حسينا احب الله من احب حسينا that allah has love for whoever has love for hussein and so we declare ya allah we have love for hussein even if we fall short in expressing and showing that love at times and ya allah we have love for al hasan and we have love for ali and fatima and we have love for aisha and ummu salama and ummu habiba and khadija and abu bakr and umar and uthman we have love for all the companions of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but especially for those companions who were also his household alu bayti rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam knew what would happen to his grandson sayyiduna jibril came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and informed him that hussein will be killed and exactly where that would happen and he even gave the dirt of the grounds where sayyiduna hussein would be killed he gave that to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam held it in his hands and wept all of this is recorded in our traditions in the books of ahlus sunnah wal jamaah in the books of hadith in the books of biographies in the books of history and so on rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam held the turab of karbala karbala karb wa bala as he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam karb wa bala anguish and pain and trial and tribulation karb means anguish and pain and bala means trial and tribulation karbala we don't have time to go into the story we all know the story that briefly when muawiya radiyallahu ta'ala anhu passed away and he named his successor as his son yazid ibn muawiya that sayyiduna hussein stood up against that injustice he refused to give bay'ah to someone who he believed would be an unfair choice for the people that this is not the way that the leader of the muslims is supposed to be chosen we don't believe in kingship that it's supposed to be shura between the people and so he stood up against that injustice he stood up against what he believed was wrong and he refused to give the pledge of allegiance and he showed civil disobedience to that oppression he was invited by the people of kufa to come and be with them letters upon letters were sent to the, to him while he was in makka from the people of iraq and then when he finally packed his bags and went to kufa with about 100 or so people most of them unarmed including about 14 youth from the household of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in addition to women and children and he arrived at that place karbala the governor the the military leader that was assigned by yazid ubaidullah ibn ziyad he confronted him in karbala and sayyiduna hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhu stood his ground and he gave ubaidullah ibn ziyad three noble choices to choose from he told him okay i'm not going to revolt you don't want me to revolt i will not come into iraq i will go back either you let me go back to makkah where i came from or you let me go to yazid and talk to him directly and negotiate with him directly 
because you want me to give bay'ah to him, right? Let me go and talk to him. I'll go alone. Or you let me go to any of the land of the Muslims. Any of the lands of the Muslims. Three very reasonable options that he gave. Ibn Ziyad rejected all three. A 28-year-old young hot-headed man, Ibn Ziyad, who is a nobody. A 28-year-old young hot-headed, arrogant, foolish, oppressive, corrupt man. He demands from the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no, the only thing that I will accept is if you come and bow down to me and kiss my hand. Hussein was faced by 4,000 men, fully armed. And he had about 70 people left from the civilians that he had come with. Brothers and sisters, imagine the moment, the pressure, that death is looming in front of you. Sayyiduna Hussein could have complied. He could have succumbed to the pressure. But he was a man of dignity, a man of honor. And so he said, no, I'm not going to do that. Do whatever you want to do. And what happened, happened after that. Massacre at Karbala. Fourteen young men from the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at least were killed. And the last man standing, Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, was also killed. Brothers and sisters, we as Sunni Muslims do not remember this tragedy simply to grieve and mourn and lament at what has passed. But we remember this story for two reasons. And I'll close with this. One, to commemorate the martyrdom of the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we believe that he died a death of a shaheed and that he is with Allah, insha'Allah ta'ala. And we commemorate his life, his legacy, because he was a man who stood for justice. A man who stood for the truth and pursued the truth. A man of honor and dignity. Because brothers and sisters, these are values that we need so direly in our times. And this is the last reason why we remember the story of Sayyiduna Hussein. Because we ask ourselves, what will we do when we are faced with pressure? And we face so many pressures nowadays as Muslims living in the West in the 21st century. What will we do when we face pressure? Will we stand up for the truth? Will we hold on to our values? Will we hold on to what we believe to be the truth and right and moral? Or will we succumb to the pressures that we face for what? For worldly gain, like the people of Kufa did, who betrayed Sayyiduna Hussein. Why? Because they succumbed to the threats of Ibn Ziyad and accepted bribes from him. So that when Sayyiduna Hussein came to Karbala, not one man from the 30,000 people who had sent letters to him showed up and supported him. Because they succumb to the pressures of the world. What will we do, brothers and sisters, when we face pressures in our lives? Will we follow the example of the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and stand up for the truth against injustices? Or will we succumb to the pressures of the world? That is the lesson, brothers and sisters, from the martyrdom of the grandson of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم سيدنا الحسين رضي الله تعالى عنه May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us all together under the liwa of Rasulullah under the banner of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم on the day of judgment with Sayyiduna Ali and Sayyida Fatima and Sayyiduna Hassan and Hussein and Abu Bakr and Umar and Aisha and all the rest of the companions Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad 
وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا مولانا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله صلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد